Uh, today we're gonna talk about no regrets. Today is a five minute video from Glamour, as in Glamour magazine. And they have several videos like this where they, um, they interview people. And uh, today's video is about, do you have any, what regrets do you have in life? And they interview people from starting from age seven all the way up to 75, seven to 75. So the little cute little seven year olds, you know, eight, nine, and they go up every year, every year. It's a five minute video. And they say things that they are, um, that they regret. I will tell you, um, if you look at, at the lady who is uh, age 67, 67, uh, call me crazy, but I'm pretty sure that is um, Elon Musk's mom, right? I think it's Elon Musk's mom. So you can check that out. Um, and we've done videos uh, with her too. But today I wanna talk about regrets and you can find some common themes amongst what they say, you know, like when, they, when they're little, they'll say things like, oh, I regret um, being mean to my friend. I regret not doing the, you know, like uh, not going to this party. And then uh, as they get into the teenage years, right? They're like, I regret um, trying to not be myself and, and, you know, trying to fit in. I regret not taking school more seriously. And you get into the 20s and you're like, I regret not taking college more seriously. And they get into the 30s and they're like, I regret not going to college or not going for my job or not, not starting my career sooner. And then in the 40s, you can see these themes where they start saying like, I regret uh, that they start saying, uh, I regret not spending more time with my, my mom or my dad who has since passed away. That is very common. See, these things are very, very common. And then in the 50s, I, I, uh, again, with the I regrets not going for it. I regret not um, starting acting career. Or in the 60s, I, I regret um, not, not doing things back in my 20s, right? I regret not, um, not joining the Peace Corps, not moving to a different country. And it's, it's so funny, you, you see the things that, that happen as you get older. And let me, and I wanna talk about regrets real quick, okay? Tip number one, um, for everybody, for all the people, actually, let me do this real quick. You know, share with us, um, share with us any regrets you have in life. Put your age, if you're willing to, if you want to put your age, I'm 48, eight. And then, so put your number, your age, and then what regrets you might have. Put those in the comment section real quick, okay? Um, so I'm 48, I have lots of regrets, okay? Uh, and I'll explain why this is important. But put your age and then what you regret. So I'm 48, I, I definitely regret not taking college more seriously, not being disciplined. I was very much into partying. Um, I was, uh, I was more, I was kind of girl crazy. I was just trying to, you know, find people to date, not very successful. Right. And I learned to play music sooner. That's awesome. Joe Bev regrets 60, 69 regrets, three marriages, 52. I regret not spending more time with my grandpa before he died. Exactly. Holly Joe 52. I regret not finishing college. There you go. Uh, Susan, 65, I regret not going to nursing school in my 20s. Marrying who I married, there you go. That mm -hmm. is some honest stuff there. 40, regret getting married first time, regret not leaving, quitting cult sooner. She was part of a cult. Yep, me too, not taking college more seriously. Uh, not letting my, not letting my, not letting my dad do more before he died, that's right. Margaret, 69, regret waiting to my 60s to get stronger. There you go. Not taking my weight problems more seriously. See, this is important. This is really important stuff. I regret not spending more time with my dad before he died. When we got his cancer diagnosis in May, January 20th, he was dead. He didn't want to do anything. He wanted to just keep working, cutting hair. But I, I regret not spending, you know, and we lived about, he lived on the, northwest side of Houston and I lived down in Galveston it was about an hour 20 minute drive I regret not driving more and uh, so uh, tip number one 
is we all have regrets. I promise you, we all have regrets. No, Dr. V, there were several people in the video who said they don't have regrets. I don't have any regrets. I, I whatever, okay? So tip number two, the people who say they have no regrets, they're, they're effing lying. They're, okay, so if, if, if the, for the people who say they don't have any regrets, either, either um, I, I mean, they're lying to themselves or they're not thinking deeply enough because the regret hurts too much and people would rather block it. They have, they have a mental block where they would rather block the regret than to admit to it. Because when you admit to regret, that means that you have to admit that you, you, made, you did something wrong. You made a fault. Like you, you should have acted when you didn't act. You should have done something. You should have apologized. And for some people, the need to be right is too strong. And so they'll, they'll say, no, I have no regrets. No, you do have regrets. You're just not willing. You're not willing to, um, you're not willing to admit to it. Does this make sense what I'm saying? So you ha you're not thinking deeply enough. You're, not, you're blocked. You're not willing to admit that you were wrong. So everyone's got regrets. If, you, if you're sitting there saying, I have no regrets, then you're, then, um, you're missing an amazing opportunity to uh, change your life. So a challenge for you today is that if you really think you have no regrets, if you really want to sit there and say, I have no regrets, I challenge you. To question that I challenge you to sit down and start with something small well there was that time I stole that purse or I, I picked on my little cousin or I made fun of my sister and it hurt her feelings and I would really sit down and I would challenge you to sit down and really think about something okay and I'm gonna give you permission and I'm gonna show you how to do it so pay attention real quick with me see there's lots of regrets coming uh, coming in right here right countless regrets right no confidence okay so i'm going to give you i'm going to show you how you can start to think about think about regrets okay so tip number three and this this is permission dr v i'm about to give you permission because here's your big block tip number three it is possible to have a great life and have regrets I'll say that again. It is possible to have a good, uh, have a very good life and still have regrets. A lot of people will say, I don't have any regrets because they don't want to admit that they don't have a good life. Like they, they think in their heads that if they say they have regrets, then that means that, that their life is flawed, that somehow there's something wrong with them, that they didn't do all they could do. Can I have an aha if you understand what I'm trying to say here? So if you listen to Dr. V and believe me when I say you can have a great life and still have regrets. So when people go, no, I don't have any regrets. What, what they're trying to say, cover up is, is they, they don't want to admit to themselves that, that, that they don't, that they, they don't think they can have a good life. If, if, if they say they have regrets, does that make sense? So when you have your sister, let's say, let's say tonight you, you have your sister over for dinner. And say, hey, let's talk about some things I regret. I really regret not spending more time with grandpa. And your sister goes, ah, I don't have any regrets. Like, I wrote it hard. I, I got hung up wet. I'm, I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, honey, like, you know, you can still have a good life. You, st you can still have a good life right now and have regrets. Well, there was that one time I, like, picked on this kid in school or whatever. You can still, like, Dr. V has a very good life. I have a great life. And I have tons of regrets. Does this make sense? Okay. So uh, tip number three was like, you can still have a good life and have regrets. Tip number four, when you admit to regrets, it doesn't make you a bad person. I'll say that again. If you admit to your regrets, that does not make you a bad person. See, a lot of people sit there and think like, oh, if I admit to a regret, then I did something wrong and I can't be wrong. That'll make me a bad person. That'll, that'll make me less spiritual. I will get banned from my church. I will, like, like really, everybody who goes to church are saints, right? Like, none of them are sinners. I mean, that's the whole purpose of church. It's a room full of sinners is what it is. Isn't that one of the basic teachings is that we are, uh, you know, all sinners and et cetera, et cetera, whatever. So um, you're, 
because you admit to regrets does not make you a bad person. You can have a good life and you're not, and you can be a good person and still have regrets, right? So I, if you go back and watch this five minute video and all the people, you can say, you, you, if you watch them, they'll say, I don't have any regrets. And there's this really, there's this look in their eyes where you know, like, no, they're covering something up. It's one of the, one of those two things that I just mentioned, okay? So we all have regrets. And if you say you have no regrets, you're, you're, you're not digging deep enough. Next tip, tip number four. Admitting that you have regrets is the first step. First step to healing. You don't have to say, I'm sorry. Dr. V, you know, like, like uh, I, my sister wants me to apologize and blah, blah, blah. And I really need to, but I'm not going to say it. You don't have to say you're sorry. Who understands what I'm saying? You don't have to say you're sorry. You just say, I regret, blah, blah, blah. I regret not studying more. I regret missing out on opportunities in college. I, I regret, you know, some things I said to some people. I regret, you know, I regret. People in my challenge know that, um, you know, and for no good reason, when my dad died in 2008, I stopped talking to my one brother who's here in the United States. I'm paying for this man to be on a five gallon bucket in his backyard. <laughs> yep. That's what you're paying for. Um, this is not very Tony Robbins like Dr. B. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you're a cheaper version of Tony Robbins. I'm not even the cheaper version of Tony Robbins. <laughs> the cheaper version of Tony Robbins would have a team and a crew. <laughs> I have a five gallon bucket <laughs> and a tripod. That's all I got. Um, so I regret, you know, maybe the last 12 years of not talking to my brother. I don't know why he's here in Houston. I'm here in Houston. We just haven't talked, you know? So when I sit there and say, I regret not talking to my brother, that doesn't mean I have to say, I'm sorry. Right? So it's a step lower. So comment if, if you, if you have a situation Comment if you have a situation where, like, like you want to make up with somebody, but you're not willing to say I'm sorry, or they're not willing to say they're sorry. And for whatever reason, y'all just, um, you know, y'all just can't get on the same page. Well, maybe the first step isn't saying I'm sorry. Who understands what I'm saying? Maybe the, maybe the first step is to say, I regret it. You know, I regret not calling you more. I, I miss, I miss when we were closer. I miss when we were younger. I miss how we used to be. Like, I regret that. And that's it. And you can start with that. Does that make sense? You can, you, you're not admitting that you're wrong. Because having regrets doesn't mean you're wrong. Right? Let me give you what it is. Here's the big aha for you. Here's the, here's the big aha. Dr. V, what are regrets? What are you really regretting? I regret hurting this person. I regret whatever. I'm going to give you a big aha. Who's ready? All when you say I regret not blah, blah, blah. A big aha is this. What you're really regretting is the fact that the time has passed. Major aha. Can I have an aha here? If you understand what I said, that was that right there is worth the price of admission to the challenge. All you're doing when you're saying, I regret, is you're regretting the passage of time. You're regretting that it happened. Now, in the moment, it is so painful. In the moment, you're like, oh, my God, I will never get past this. This hurts. It's like I'm so sad. I, my, my grandfather is, is, is dead. I, but all you're saying when you're saying, I regret not spending time more time with my dad, is you boil it down. I'm just, I'm upset that the time passed. The time has passed and I didn't take action. I didn't do anything about it. I didn't correct it when I could. All you're regretting is the passage of time. Um, you know, I, I still love my brother. We didn't fight or anything, but I'm, I regret, you know, the 12 years. You know, uh, if you regret your, <laughs> some of you are like, Somebody said earlier, I regret my, my three marriages. <laughs> 
when you regret your three marriages or your first marriage, all you're regretting is the time that has passed, the time that is spent. So what, you, so what you're saying is like, I should have gotten out of that marriage two years earlier or five years earlier. You know, the four and a half years I spent in college, I regret not taking it more seriously. I regret those four and a half years. I should have spent my time better. Okay. So hopefully those are some uh, major ahas about regrets, right? These are uh, time-based things. Now, let me give you the next one. You can, you can live a good life and still have regrets. You can live, you can be a good person and still have regrets. And regrets are nothing but you're regretting the passage of time. So what do we need to do? So watch this. Comment, comment if there is something in your life right now that you know if you don't do something right now, you're going to regret it. Comment. Comment if you know that you need to, you need to call your daughter. You need, you need to call your son who's, who hasn't come home, who you're fighting with your father, you're fighting with your mom. You're just comment if you know, like you are, man, you need to apply for that promotion, but you've been chicken shit. You need to apply for college, but you've been too, you, you had self doubt. You need to apply to go to nursing school, but you, you can't figure out how you're going to make the schedule work. Comment if you have something right now that you know you need to act on. Otherwise, you're going to regret it. See? We all have it. I need to do something now before I regret it. It's going to happen. So, if, if regrets are nothing more than regretting the passage of time, what's going to happen is if you sit there and you don't do anything about it, you're going to wake up and regret it. There you go. I need to call my eldest daughter. Didn't step up my parents. See? This is real talk here, guys. We have, we have to do something. Uh, so many things. Yeah, exactly. Yes, get in life. Start exercising. You know, I stopped drinking <laughs> seven days. It's the state of my present marriage. You're going to regret it. If you let your marriage go another month another year another whatever they don't sign the divorce papers you can't move on you know this is real talk everybody we all have it and you know if you don't do it you're going to regret it if you don't sign up for the challenge you're going to regret it next month you're going to regret it in two days when you miss dr v going live you know um the we deal with a lot of life-changing stuff in the challenge that's what it's all about man you have a community and we we we, we hear it all we hear abuse, we hear about rapes, we hear about neglect, we hear about bad marriages, I shoulda, coulda, woulda. We talk all that stuff in the challenge. Weightlosschallenge.com, I hope you check it out. So, Dr. V, how do I fix it? Let me give you your elevator tip. We are almost done. Who wants the elevator tip? Has this been a helpful discussion about regrets? Have I made you kind of like change your idea about regrets? I will tell you, if you're in the challenge and you have an accountability partner, let me give you a challenge. I want you to sit down and really write down some regrets. I want you to talk to your accountability partner and talk about, you know, write down a list of regrets, man. And I think if you will open up to this, I think if you open up to this, you will understand that, um, that you have more regrets than you think because the more i talk about it the more the more that i i start to realize man there are more things that i definitely regret you know even small stupid shit that i did when i was a little kid you know i regret i, I stole a transformer one day when i was like a little kid you know the cars that transform into robots transformers that was really big when i was a little kid but i grew up really poor and I went to like a five and dime store and uh, our equivalent of like a Walmart back then, but it wasn't a Walmart. I went to the toy section. I just, and every day I looked at this one transformer and I really wanted it. But I couldn't afford it. 
And then one day I walked out with it with walked out with it with it underneath my shirt. And I played with it and it always made me feel feel bad. It always made me feel bad, right? I regret that. Small stuff. So the more you think about regrets, the more that you um you know the more more things you'll come up with. Now, some people catching this late will say, Dr. V, see, you sh- you can't waste time talking about it. You can't dwell on that stuff. That's right. You don't dwell. But remember, it's the first step, the first step of healing. Maybe the first step in your life, the first step you need to take is to write down all the regrets. And some of y'all said it. I regret not taking my losing weight sooner. I regret not having weight loss surgery sooner. I, I regret not quitting alcohol sooner. I regret not leaving my marriage sooner. Right? So all you're doing is regretting the passage of time. Let me give you the elevator work. Who's ready? The elevator tip. Here we go. Ready? Fire. Aim. This elevator tip will change your life. It will change your relationship with regrets. It will change your relationship with uh, what you do, how you conduct your life, how people see you, etc. Ready, fire, aim. See, the average person, and you're not average because you're watching this, they think ready, aim, fire. But people in this tribe, we have to learn. The key to success, the key to change your life is ready, fire, aim. The average person will say, ready, aim, fire. They'll spend their whole fucking life aiming. They'll never pull the trigger. This will change your life if you hear what I'm talking about. The cause, the cause of your regrets is that you never pulled the trigger. You never fired. You never did. You never apologized. You never, you never took action. Who understands what I'm saying? Right? You never apologized. You never made up. You never traveled. You never signed the divorce papers. You never applied. Because you were t- too busy aiming. You're aiming, aiming. I gotta wait. I gotta wait till coronavirus is over. I gotta wait till my scores are better. I gotta wait till my credit scores are better. I gotta wait till I'm out of this situation. That's what the average people do. Everybody I know, and I know a lot of people that are successful, including DRV, lives by the philosophy, ready, fire, aim. We get ready, we fire. You take action, and then you aim. Then you course correct. As, you, as the data starts coming in, this is what happened last year with the pandemic. As we started learning more about coronavirus, we course corrected. Masks don't work. Yes, masks work. Yes, uh, vaccination, no vac- like the number, good for good for little kids, not good for little kids. Like we change. Can you open school safely? Yes, no, yes, no. Like you course correct along the way. But the average person has been taught wrong. They've been taught ready, aim, fire. And the key to life, one, is to do the opposite of what everybody does. You got to do the opposite of what everybody does. So if everybody else is doing ready, aim, fire, you've got to do ready, fire, aim. Ready, fire, aim. So I want you to make this your mantra for June. This is going to be our entire tip for uh, our entire thing for June. Okay, ready, fire, aim. You got to get ready. You got to take action, and then you try to course correct. I started this challenge on a whim. This was last uh, February, leap year, 20, uh, 2020. And it, it's originally called the leap year challenge because I was going to go live for 28 days. I said, I said I'm going to live every day for 28 days. And I'm going to have a, a, you know, send them an email. And I'm going to show them all the best YouTube videos that have changed my life. And I'm going to go live and, and I'm going to talk. And everyone loved the beta month. That was called the beta month. That was free. And then as I got close to the end of the beta month everyone loved it and i was like y'all want to continue this and they're like yeah we yeah, don't stop dr v don't stop and so i said all right well i'll charge the so the beta founder so the original price was 19 dollars a month but the beta founders got a special coupon code for nine dollars and fifty cents half off 
So there's about 200 people in the tribe that are paying $9.50 a month for this, which is like, you know, 30 cents a day. It's like nothing. Um, much, much cheaper than therapy. And even at $47 a month, it's much cheaper than therapy. But I started this on a whim. So I didn't know what I was doing. I said, ready, fire. And then along the way, we course corrected. The first of which was the fact that coronavirus hit. And I said, oh my God, we've got to change. Like in April, I was like, we have to change. Like we, we, um, I have to talk about money because the money situation is going to really change. Y'all saw what happened uh, in April, end of March and April, the stock market crashed, cryptocurrencies crashed, people were laid off, furrowed. And I, and I was like, you got to be selling shit. And they, they got their first stimulus check. Who remembers this? Comment if you remember this, right? Beta founders, comment. If you remember, I was like, dude, you got to sell your shit on Facebook Marketplace. People are getting st stimulus checks and they're, they're spending it like a bunch of idiots. Like June was one of the best, um, set a record for uh, like, set a record for um, used car sales. Because people were like taking their, take taking their um their stimulus checks and buying cars and so i was like dude sell your shit uh because people are just like spending their money like stupid right so so that's what happened and so we started talking about money i had to course correct and then and then along the way throughout the year i paypal challenges i had people who weren't paying but were still in the group all sorts of, yeah course correct so ready fire aim and your life will change so for all of you who said i have something i've got to do like i i'm gonna have to do something be, otherwise i'll regret it all of you who said that i gotta call my daughter i gotta do this i gotta do that all of you you need to ready fire aim so you need to dial that number she didn't answer course correct send her a text she didn't answer course correct send an email she didn't respond course correct send her a little video Ready, fire, aim. You have to do that. You have to do that in your businesses. You have to do that in your lives, right? I applied for nursing school, didn't get in. Apply again. Apply to a different place. Apply to two places. You know what I mean? As opposed to sitting on the couch going, well, my score's not high enough. My grades are not. Dude, they'll take you. They're hurting for students. They're hurting for healthcare workers. Of course they're going to take you. You know, why wouldn't they take you? This is the time to be like doing this shit. They need healthcare workers. See, this conversation you're having in your head, that's your that's your own self-doubt. You know, that's the things that you end up regretting. Right? Ready. Fire. Aim. Okay. Let me give you a bonus tip. A bonus tip is this. Um Imperfect action defeats planning every single time. Imperfect action. Imperfect action. I want you to start taking imperfect action. It, you don't need to wait for it to be perfect. You don't need to wait for the PowerPoint presentation to be perfect. Don't ever fucking wait till you hit goal weight. You will never hit goal weight. I'll say that again. Don't ever wait till you hit goal weight. You will never hit goal weight. If you're waiting to, to make it to goal weight before you, before you apply, before you document your journey, before you start taking selfies, you will never hit goal weight. It, you get to goal weight through imperfect action. You, you try a fucking green smoothie, it tastes horrible. You try a new, you try it again, make it taste better. Add coconut water, add frozen you know, fruits. You, you try a dish, it tastes horrible. Try it again. Imperfect action. If you don't take action, imperfect action, you'll never get to goal weight. You'll never get that promotion. I promise you, you will never get that promotion. You will never get that date. You know? You will never get that relationship you're after. You will never get to travel. You'll spend too much time planning, too much time thinking, not doing it, right? Give yourself permission. You know, I'm going to mess this up. I'm a mess. I am messy. These are one of the things, one of the things that I taught my group back last year, 2020. 
I am messy and that's okay. I am messy and that's okay. This is messy. That's okay. I'm sitting on a five gallon bucket, guys. <laughs> it's okay. And it hasn't gotten any better. I've been sitting on a five gallon bucket the whole fucking time for the, since last February. <laughs> and it's okay. Imperfect action will trump, will beat, will defeat inaction every single time. Every single time. No regrets. No, I have lots of regrets. Let me give you a bonus, bonus tip. Let me give you a bonus, bonus tip. Who's ready? This is for the diehards. This is for the people who are really ready for the bonus, bonus tip. Okay, I'm going to give you a big aha. Some of y'all are thinking right now. All right? Put a one in the comment section. If what I've taught you today is very helpful, but put a one in the comment section. If you think what I'm trying to tell you is how to avoid having regrets in the future. I said, call your daughter, call your sister, take the action so you don't have the regret in the future. Put a one in the comment section. If you think what I'm trying to teach you is how to not have regrets. <laughs> now, some of you are like, I know Dr. V, he's trying to trick us. <laughs> If the whole point of today is to not have regrets, how do you avoid having regrets? Okay, good. So, <laughs> nope. <laughs> bonus, bonus tip for those of you still watching, we're done. Bonus, bonus tip is this. If you're listening to me, if you take imperfect action, if you ready, fire, aim, you will end up having more regrets. You will end up having more regrets. What the fuck, Dr. V? What the fuck, Dr. V? More regrets? I don't want more regrets. Why, why are you telling me how to have more regrets? Who remembers that movie Schindler's List? Liam Nelson, you know? He's, um, it's about the Holocaust, Germany's invading, and he's a businessman. And he has this factory and all he's doing, he's, re, he's, um, he's uh, trying to hide. Uh, you realize as the movie goes through, what he's doing is he's trying to get into the higher ups of the Nazi organization. So that way he can smuggle out kids who are going, Jewish kids who are going to get um, killed. And who remembers the end of Schindler's List where he's crying? He's crying because why? Why is he crying? He goes, I should have helped more people. I could have helped more kids. I needed to help more kids. And his um, friend says, you did all you could do. You've helped so, mil so many people. Like you, you saved so many kids. Who remembers this? He's hiding the juice. He's trying. That's right. He didn't save more. He did all of this action. And what you'll realize is at the end of the day, when you start doing more stuff, when you start traveling more, when you start, you know, ha going to more parties or asking people out or going for, for the promotion, when you hit that hundred thousand, do you ever want to stay at a hundred thousand dollars a year? No, man. You're like, dude, I want one hundred twenty five thousand. I want one hundred fifty thousand. Uh, when you when your business hits a million dollars, are you going to stop? No, you're going to want five million dollars. You want ten million dollars. So the bonus bonus tip is this. If you do what I tell you, you want more regrets. You want more regrets in life. You should do more. I want to do more. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, died probably 10 years ago now. What did he die of? Pancreatic cancer. Worth billions of dollars. Changed people, changed the entire world with the smartphone concept. Before then, we were addicted to Crackberry. We had keyboards and stuff. There was this idea of a touchscreen. We didn't have fucking have touchscreen. He invented touchscreen. This is this idea of apps and stuff. He completely changed the world. I guarantee you he had regrets. He could have done it sooner. He could have. He wished he had a couple more years so he could see what happened. I'll give you a big regret. 
when he was first diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, guess what he did? Did he go have surgery? Did he go have chemotherapy? No. He traveled the world, and there's nothing wrong with this. Don't get me wrong. He tra- but there's a reason why I'm telling you this. Pancreatic cancer is a bad cancer. We, we do not treat it very well. You want to catch it early and have surgery and have chemotherapy because it's a bad cancer. Okay? So instead of having surgery, which was what was recommended, he went and traveled the world looking at experts and tried to find holistic ways of curing his pancreatic cancer without realizing that the most holistic way of curing pancreatic cancer is to have surgery. <laughs> that is that is the best way. So he spent like two years traveling the world, taking medicines and herbs and flushes and all sorts of stuff. And finally, he came back, his tumor had grown, and he ended up having surgery. Now, if you've ever watched his, he had that Stanford speech where he gave um, a speech to the graduating class of Stanford in like, I don't know, 2010 or something like that. Like, don't follow, don't do what other people have planned for you. Like, be a rebel, whatever that, that talk, which is a good commencement speech. If you listen to the whole commencement speech, he says, I had surgery and as of right now, I can say I'm cancer free. And then five years later, he's dead. I promise you, he would probably be alive today if he had started with surgery and chemotherapy. I'm not 100% sure, but if you look, statistically speaking, the sooner you can catch and remove pancreatic cancer, the much better, the much better your chances of living are. So he still, he'll, he still might be dead, but the chances are he probably would be alive. So having said that, on his deathbed, do you think he, you think he's sitting there going, man, I sure, I don't regret anything. Or do you think he's going, I probably should have had surgery two years sooner. You fucking know he's sitting there thinking I should have had surgery two years sooner. I could be around. I could have five more years. I could help more people. I could have more products, more devices. I, I have this um, other idea. You know, I have this other thing I want to do. Of course he does. See, the big players, the big ballers, they all know when Elon Musk dies and we are not to Mars. Do you think he has regrets? Do you think he will have regrets if he doesn't live to see himself go to Mars or the first person to go to Mars? Do you think, he'll, of course he, w- he will, right? Um, Tony Shea, the founder of Zappos, which got bought out by Amazon, right? He sold it to Amazon. He was CEO. Last February, he retired from the CEO. He was young. He was like 40 years old. Stepped down from the CEO uh of zappos retired to focus on his um you know charity work february 2020 in june the summer of 2020 he dies in a house fire you know like three months into retirement he dies from a house fire during coronavirus what the fuck you don't think he has regrets fuck yeah he has regrets see you want more regrets And the more you do, the more imperfect action you take, the more you travel, the more people you meet, the more ideas, the more the more MLMs you join and screw up and fuck up. And the more crafts you make and the more projects you make and the more businesses you start. And you're like, wow, I sold. Someone actually bought that. Someone actually bought my jewelry. Someone actually bought my online course. Someone you'll be left with the idea like I should have done more. I should have done more. That's the bonus, bonus tip. Regrets are not a bad thing. You want more regrets. You want more regrets because you start opening up to like the possibilities of all the shit that I could have done. Today is transformation day three of five. If you have not joined our challenge, you have two more days. I've opened up the challenge for you guys. I've opened up the challenge for you guys, weightlosschallenge.com. If you love this sort of insight, this sort of wisdom, this sort of motivation, go to weightlosschallenge.com and join us. Don't wait. We'll get you with a, uh, I go live every single day with this sort of talk, this sort of motivation. You'll have an accountability partner that you talk to every single day. They'll hold you accountable. You see all these people that are in this challenge who have said that they're life has changed or life is changing they're going for it they get rid of all the snarky comments we've gotten rid of all the snarky people there's not there are no trolls in the challenge they're all supportive people 
got to get in on it. Weightlosschallenge.com. It's open. Enrollment's open for a couple of days for about $1.50 a day. You can have all of this. $47 a month will change your life. I will tell you that if you are not willing to invest in yourself for $47 a month, if you're not willing to invest in yourself for $47 a month, you are missing out. You have other problems in your life. You have other things, right? You have other things that are troubling you, right? I'm telling you, the answer is to get around the tribe, new people, get in, get all in. Weightlosschallenge.com, change your life, change your life, right? Don't, here you go. Not getting, instead of quitting, you should have gotten an accountability. Don't quit. Invest in yourself. You're going to pay for it one way or the other. You're going to pay for me or you're going to pay for a therapist or you're going to pay for a loss of business. You're going to pay for this, the anxiety, the suffering, right? Best decision ever.